Okay, should we do that once again, but with feeling? The spring has sprung. And with it, we have been sent a lens by TT Artisans. This is the 21 millimeter F1.5, a spherical lens for full frame Z cameras. So I'm gonna test out this little manual focus lens. Yeah, we're in Sissenhurst. Mm -hmm. And since we love wide angle lenses, we're gonna definitely check this one out. That's what we're gonna do. All righty. All righty then. All righty then. Don't fall in the lake with my cameras, please. Ah, those are your cameras, that's good. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a wide lens, I can tell you that much. But what I like about it, at least for the nature type of shots, it doesn't feel distorted. So we're going to check it on the buildings later on. But where you don't have straight lines, it looks pretty well balanced. So the first thing I noticed about this lens is that the aperture is very clicky and smooth, although the focusing is back to front in comparison to Nikon lenses. So your infinity is that way and your focus focusing distance is that way. Don't know what it's going to be like sharpness wise. I do have focus peaking on, but I've found with these third party lenses generally not to trust it. So it will be a lot of checking focus before I actually take my photo. Well, the good news is it's a wide angle lens, so your depth field is going to be huge. Uh, what about build quality? Is it all metal? It does feel like an all metal lens. Even the little optional lens hood that they give you with it is metal. Uh, so that's quite impressive. The mount is metal and it does feel quite well built. So not heavy, but not skimping on the quality. And what you're saying is for 229 pounds, they give you a metal mount. Yeah, exactly. So not too shabby there. Shots fired. <laughs> not autofocus though. Con likes to use my cameras near bodies of water <laughs> just to test my uh, my stress <laughs> levels today. You know me. So, Becky, what I need to do now is to put 22 filters at the front, yeah. become a tripod, <laughs> and do a three hour exposure. That's what you need to do. Ooh, flare. <laughs> Ooh. Look at this. Ooh, flare. Ooh. <laughs> okay, much better. Okay, let me, let me see. I just want to see how close we can get with this lens. Half a meter, right? So Wait. it says. Let's see. All right, and we're going to check bokeh as well. So. so are you trying at different apertures? Yeah, no, I'm shooting wide open at 1.5. 1.5? This is a 1.5 lens. Yeah. Uh, well, when I no, because you look at the wide angle lens and they're like, oh, it's a full way, a 4.5. It's actually 1.5. First of all, chromatic aberrations, right? Wide open. A bit of flare with the sun coming in, but that's fine. Uh, the bokeh is busy, but it's a wide angle lens. I mean, I can't expect 85 millimeter bokeh on that. So, but let me just stop it down and see how it handles the flare. Uh, so let's just, okay, okay. So at about a four, it eliminates the flare, which is good, and I can't see any chromatic vibrations. So that's pretty good in my book. All right, tell me, Con, what is it like in terms of sharpness and vignetting? Okay, from my scientific test here, where I look through the viewfinder and my head is flying, um, I can see at 1.5, really soft corners, but that's expected on this type of lens, right? So stopping it down to about 2.8, you definitely have a good improvement there. So I'm just gonna zoom into the corners. Still soft. Let's see, 5.6. Yep. So F8 gives you a sharpness across the board. 1.8, very soft corners. Again, usable not for commercial work, but if you're shooting low light, 
you know, and that's the only way to take the shot, then yeah, definitely use it. I would still stop it down to F2. You see quite a bit of improvement there. Now, in terms of vignetting, so you got vignetting up to about 2.8 or 2F4, then it disappears. So, but again, it's not a white land of vignetting where it's really, really noticeable. It's there, but I would say the soft corners are more noticeable than vignetting in this case. Okay, so how is it in low light? It's pretty good, actually. Um, again, you can zoom in 100% and check your sharpness. But overall, as I say, don't shoot wide open at 1.5 unless you have to, because yes, you do get soft corners. But otherwise, stop down to 5.6, the center sharpness improves significantly. At f11, it's perfect for landscapes. You do get distortion, you'll do however you can correct in Lightroom or any other raw software developer. Nice. You know what, Becky? I do like a good 21 mil because it's wide enough to fit things in without distorting way too much, like let's say 15 mil would normally do, or 14 mil, you know? But just keep it in place, be wide enough, not just for landscape and architecture, but also for documentary photography where you're literally right in the crowd and you can just take a good shot, adapt to field will cover it. So it's really point to set up. So for me personally, if I have to choose a prime lens, that would be something around 20, 21 millimeter mark instead of something like 15. So overall, if you're looking for an inexpensive wide angle lens for your full frame Z camera and you don't mind manual focus, then this TT Artisans lens may be worth considering at just 250 pounds. That's true. And then again, on wide angle, your depth of field is huge. So focusing becomes quite easy, even if it's manual focus lens. And for people like me, who don't want to spend thousand pounds on ultra wide angle lenses, that could be really good options. And I'm really glad that now we're getting a lot more wide angle options for Z system. That's right. You asked and the rest of the world answered. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe. And if you haven't been, you should come to Sissinghurst. It's a beautiful place.